our way home from uh, from nationals. And it's still daylight out. It is still daylight out. But that's okay because it's the summer. Yeah. It can be daylight at like 9 o'clock. So we don't know what the percentage is. Uh-huh. But we're different And trends. we're always up for semantics up in here. <laughs> Next time we do this, we should really fuck them over and like wear the same shirts again. Oh, that would be that would be great. That like fucking stinky. Five that would, I, I would of, smell. Uh, like the next five episodes of Movement Attack, everybody's wearing the same thing. Ah. Oh. Oh. Uh. Uh. Because the thing is, we do it there and back, and for like a multiple day trip, so like uh. for Canadian Nationals, we'd just be disgusting uh. on the way back. Well, no, I mean we would have. We I would hope that we would have the intelligence to say, you know what, if we're going to do this, we should go to like a buy two of the same or buy two of the same shirt. Mm. Oh, yeah, just take it off. <laughs> it smells is this only our, like this car is trip. Our road trip shirt. This is all we ever. <laughs> well, it's like Tom's <laughs> yellow checkered shirt that he only wears to. Speaking of which, guess what motherfucker showed up at Canadian Nationals? Good for him. Tom, goddamn Kerr. I am like a hero clicks prophet, man. Speaking of which, at this time, by now, I want to congratulate Devin Owens on winning Canadian Nationals. Not only is Dennis uh, Devin Owens a good friend of the channel, Married with Clicks, he's a good part of our practice team, and he's Canadian! <laughs> Suck it! <laughs> we finally did it! Oh, I feel like a little bit of a profit in the fact that I said Devin Owens would probably be the first Canadian to win Canadian Nationals, and I said Tom is probably going to show up. Yep. Why can't this sh work for me? Jason Collins is going to win. Ugh, God, I can't even get the words out. So much of a profit I am. <laughs> no, but I want to congratulate Devin and thank you, Tom, for coming. It was great seeing you. And congratulations to Mike for coming up second, making. Yeah, we had a three out of the top four were Canadian. Yeah. It was a. Yeah, Patricia Lamb. And also, this is the first year where we had more Americans in attendance than Canadians, and the Canadians still won. Canada, can we get back to showing up for Canadian Nationals, please, guys? We realized it was in Montreal. There's a lot of people that don't know where that is. Or where <laughs> but fuck off. I mean, geography people. Look at a map. Yeah. All right. So well, I'm apparently getting a thousand text and pay Facebook messages about who won. Guys, get on the Facebook, please. Facebook.com slash MaryBookClicks. It's time to continue the Malcolm Rush of questions. We've got, we got a lot to go here. Um, but we got a lot of road to go. We only did an hour's worth on the last time because we needed to throw on a GPS app on my phone. So, uh, unfortunately, we kind of lost out on some... You know, I could think Bradley. Bradley. <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I, people are probably... They're probably thinking that about that snort they're eating. I know. That's you know what? That's fine. Because you know it's a good laugh when there's a snort. Yeah. Brad, Bradley is the name we gave to the boy band voice option on Waze. If you have got it, it's fucking hilarious. All right, guys, let's get into it. Malcolm Rush wants to know some questions about uniques. Okay. Figures with the silver board or silver line around them. Mm -hmm. uh, best, worst, and personal favorite uniques. Oh. Uh, best, worst, and personal favorite. Um, just a unique line that happened to be unique that was the worst. Is, yeah, he was good. What, what, what do you put him at, Amber? Um, he's the best. He's under our best category. Uh, you put him on best? Okay. Aiden? unique. Come back to me. Alex Wilder. I like watching my opponent struggle. Oh, I didn't realize he was unique. Oh, he's you. Can you imagine having two Alex, two Alex Wilders and making your opponent pick twice? Oh, that's nasty. Oh. Well, which one? The Ant-Man does the same. No, the Ant-Man no, switches. No, he switches teams. Is yeah. that me, Lincoln? Yes, that's you. Yeah, sorry. Turn your notifications off, you filthy savage. <laughs> Amber's going to have a lot of editing to do with this one. Um, no, we don't edit these videos. Oh, we, we don't just, edit these videos? We just anymore? don't mind if we don't get the monetization on your swearing language. Okay. We just kind of put up a warning where it's like, hey guys, this Aiden's is in the video. very candid and we're going to swear. Yeah, Aiden, uh, Aiden's got a potty mouth, sorry. I liked Split Lips. It was great. Um, I can't think of really anybody else at this time that I would... To, 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 okay, um, worst. Worst unique. Wasn't, like, Condiment King or um, Killer Moth unique or something? No. <laughs> I want to say con closer to Condiment King, but I don't think Condiment King was unique. No, he wasn't. The worst one is the Emperor Joker from the Justice League set. That was pretty bad. That was a pretty I bad remember unique. looking at him, like, because I, I, I remember uniques being, like, 
like the super rares, uh -huh. and I would just pull them out. I'm like, but this is number two. Why is this number two? Why is he 200 points? I don't understand what's going on here. Okay, we're just gonna put this over here on the side. Amber? Oh, I thought, like I said, it's, I was thinking it was one of those weird ones where they're like Killer Moth or Conor King or something where it's just like, who is this character and why are you unique? Was Calendar Man unique? Yeah, Calendar Man. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to be checking the date as to what figure is my favorite or what's gonna be good. All right. Uh, what's favorite. your personal favorite unique? Bizarro. Emerald Empress. Aiden. Uh, personal favorite unique is... Um, uh, the question... Was the question unique from the Flash set? Maybe? Yeah? The Chase one? I think Chase's Chase might have been. The Trinity of Sin? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think they were all unique. Okay, I'm gonna go with that one. That was my favorite. That was great. That was a great figure. All right, next up, what's something that's unique that shouldn't have been? I can't think of anything that's been unique that shouldn't have been. When they originally came out with the Kingdom Come Chase, uh, Kingdom Come unique super rares for like I think it was Unleashed and uh, Fudge Legacy. Legacy. They unique. They made the uh, original Bat Knight unique. Oh yeah. And it's yeah. Okay. Generic. I think that would be the only one I could think was the most egregious. Amber, is there anything you think was egregious as a unique? No, because I, like, once they made the unique rule, it was for a very specific reason. Yeah. Well, originally it was a rarity thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, yeah, there was a reason for it. So, bat, I think, yeah, I'll go with eight. The Bat Knight's probably the most egregious one. Um, what's, what's something that isn't unique? That should be. What is something uh, we should only be allowed one of? Astronomer. I would say any of the elders, really. Yeah. Indeed. I would go with, uh, with Mangog. He is unique. Oh, is he? Yeah, oh. I think so. Yeah, he's the only unique one. Oh, is he? Okay, yeah. well then, there you go. That's why you don't see everybody. That's what I'm like. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, now yeah. that I stopped and analyzed. Oh, I'd have built a team with two mangoes. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't have an answer. Okay. Yeah, Amber took the answer with all the elders of the universe, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you think is the best and worst unique sculpture? I pick one of those butthole things from Infinity Challenge. Well, the problem with, well, Infinity Challenge, they were that dynamic. I remember getting the unique Cersei from Critical Mass. And her face looks like a Picasso painting. Yeah. So that was kind of like. Who was it? It was uh, Lash, I think it was, or Leash was the character name. And seriously, his face looked like Charlie Brown hair was squiggled onto the mouth. It was like something. It was so weird. You're like, beady. It was like a ditto was confused looking at me. <laughs> Amber? I don't really have one. No? No best, no worst? I mean, best? Oh, was there a best sculpt too? Yeah, best sculpt, worst sculpt. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I can't think of They're on such a straighten right now. Um, I'm Mangog looks amazing. Yeah. For a big yellow dude. I mean, I, I've always loved the Emerald Empress, like, the, like, two or three times we've had her in clicks, but the most recent one being Superman and Legion of Superheroes, oh. where she had the detachable eye, that was an incredible sculpt. She looked amazing, so. Uh, I think... Keep going. No, no, sorry. Um, uh, I think that they tend to really do a lot in terms of unique, especially when they have, uh, they make some of the Clonic Suicides uniques. Um, so there's some really good sculpting there. Um, I liked uh, the Kingdom Come Flash from the Flash set was nice. I like that. Um, in terms of was that unique? It was unique. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think they. Uh, yeah. 
Um, I think Dupe was probably one of the best looking uniques. Cause he do he looked doopy. <laughs> he looked doopy. Dupe ice cream cone. I do I I do like that I just created the phrase looked doopy. Have they ever made a figure that do of dupe that isn't really doopy though? I mean let's be honest. Don't we only have like three? Three out of three. All looking doopy. Just saying. And all nailing the doopiness. The doopiness. The doopiness. Okay. So which is Jen what do you think is better? Uniques or primes and why? Uh, Amber, you clearly have an opinion on the matter. Um, primes. Because uniques are just like, alright, this is a kind of strong power, let's make sure they don't get two of them. Whereas primes are like, well, we got her up the rarity oh. on this, so we're gonna title, play title them. characters are included in this, sorry. Um still you you're still right. Sorry, but yeah. We're we're gonna up the rarity on this, but we wanna make them playable, so cost them properly and like the meta the primes that end up in the meta are in the meta because they should cost like a hundred points more than they do. And it feels like they've gone a kind of away from that with the most recent few sets that we've had where the primes haven't really done much. But even still like primes are designed better than uniques. It What's your better, the uniques or the primes? Or title characters. Or title characters. Things you're only allowed one of on the board. Uh, I think that the better design, I think from a, I'm gonna go with the title character, is the, be, is the better of the three, because they're a little bit more fun to play, they're a little bit wacky, and the ones that I've played anyway, there's, there's been a bunch that I haven't. Um, my problem with the prime design and the prime idea is that for whatever reason, until they you know, they all rotated out and they made the TA, okay, let's make all the prime squadron supreme, but you can't play them all on the same team until we invented a TA like a year and a half afterwards. Yeah. And I mean, unique, unique was always gonna be, you could only always use one of them regardless of their power structure or anything like that. But it's just, so you just always assumed. And it was like, okay, I'm only gonna have this one character on my team. Okay, I can understand that. Jason, you didn't have an answer. I did not answer yet. I'm gonna let you guys answer first on the way here. Okay, so how do I put this? They're both right. Tele characters are more fun to play. But primes are generally stronger. Uniques are just uniques because if you have two exact copies of the same character, that's going to be problematic. Whereas title characters, you know, you only want one of them because, honestly, I think it's more for the downside. <laughs> if two of them get KO'd, you basically, if, like, if your opponent hasn't already won, they won. <laughs> primes. Amber what's, it, Amber, what's it like having two primes on a team? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I haven't. We had one tournament where we did that, wasn't I it? I know, but it was fucking hilarious. It, it was, was fun. It was great. I had like three primes on my team with animals. Yeah. I did uniques. My team for that tournament was two Bizarros and two Emerald. No, I was Witches. talking about the time you pulled the title Magneto and the title Charles. Oh. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so primes end up just being stronger because you're only allowed one prime on, on your force, period. But then they become that becomes a cheapening of their cost, and that's been obvious, obviously apparent in quite a few different primes. So, I'd say strength, primes, playability, and fun title characters. Uniques are just a stopgap measure for design to behave themselves. Are there any unique, fun uniques to play? Oh, there's tons of fun unique figures to play. I mean, you just gotta throw them on the board. I mean, I know Bizarro seems frustrating to kill, but he's fun. Oh, yeah. I don't care who you are. He is fun AF. Um, what do you think, Aiden? The only unique that you can't have fun with, I think, for anybody, and if you're playing him, he's just fucking dirty and you should be ashamed of yourself, was Faust. Yeah. Yeah, Faust is the only thing that I can think of. It's like, there's every... Like, you could sit there and play the unique because it was the super rare version of, like, Cat Girl. Cosmic Justice who's like 50 points and does like leap climb or whatever it is that she does. I don't know her dialogue. 
playing head. But I mean, that can be fun because it's like, hey, yeah, I'm playing with an eight attack and I'm playing with cat girl. But this is like, you're dirty, you're evil, get out of my store because you've just put Faust on the table. Yeah. 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 Amber, anything you want to add to that? No, I think it's, and oh, the, the problem that I'm having with this particular line of questions is that Uniques, um, like a, once we're, we've gotten into the, um, the rarity change of the like, card um, era, the carded era, Uniques aren't really, like they're random. So it's not really off the top of my head as to what Uniques are out there because there's no set amount of Uniques in a set. There's no set rarity to the Uniques. It's just, oh, hey, this character did something cool. We don't want you to have two of them. So that's a Unique. So like I can't even tell you what uniques there are, but yeah, like basically what Aiden's saying is like most uniques are fun if you can play them. Like the only ones that aren't really fun are like characters like Faust. I mean, even this weekend, I got mangogged twice, and it's still a fun character, and it's ridiculous the amount of output and damage he can do. But that's still like that's not a and like it crippled the crap out of my team but it's like it was still fun games like I still enjoyed myself it's not like when I sat down and played against a Felix Faust, Doctor Strange and Tim Hunter and didn't actually play that game that's when you don't have fun uniques <laughs> yeah very much so just give me a second here all right, so we move to the next. Honestly, a lot of those questions about uniques, you're going to see in a further line of questioning why I think he has the opinion he does about certain unique figures. But next, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking WWE. Uh -oh. <laughs> Aiden's like, all right, I'm out. Okay. Macho Man Randy Savage. That's all I fucking know. It's, it's, that's the only person I did. Undertaker. Undertaker and Macho Man Randy Savage. So you named two figures who are going to be made? I know. I'm going to preface this conversation, this line of questioning that I need to do. Uh, my knowledge of the professional wrestling entertainment basically stops in like the mid-90s. So you can get like half of them. Because they're making Andre the Giant. They're making Macho Man. They're making Jake the Snake. They're making Jake the Snake. I don't think they're making Jake the Snake. I was going to say, they're making Jake the Snake. There's quite a few old school wrestlers that they're making. They probably will, but I don't recognize a lot of the names that are on that list. Cool, believe it or not, you will be able to answer quite a few of these questions. Okay, well good. For instance, now this one's this one's a weird one. Um, now given the timing of this question, or the, que the timing of us answering it, we know of the existence of four or five powers in the WWE, but we know the rules for maybe three of them. Uh, that would be nimble, which is like sidestep with one movement, but plus two to breakaway. We have uh, reversal, which is, um, I believe it's if missed, put an action token on the opposing character. I, I might actually be wrong on that one, to be brutally honest. Um, and then we had one other was a uh, stunning, stun. It was a stunning shot. Or I think that actually might have been the one I was talking about where it's like you hit, nah, I don't know. Either way, I don't know the person the rules personally because, but the rules exist. They are in the collective consciousness. But he wants to know what powers, oh, and there's also going to be Leaping Strike and one other, I can't remember what it was. Well, isn't that the one that's like, if you're next to like blocking, it's like off the ropes or something? No, that's, that, I think that's specific to certain characters' powers. Okay. Or what is considered, ropes is like a, an ability. That's going to be on the pack, kind of okay. like how we have great size and that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. But anyway, um, what powers and abilities should be included uh, in the circle power and color uh, color slot? Um, and he wants to know if we want to... I, I don't know if we're going to come up with names and rules for these necessarily, but something to such an effect. Now, given that we have Leaping Strike, we know that people are going to be jumping off the top rope, so I don't need to be talking about that. Um... That's probably going to be the new improved version of Leap, Leap Climb that we really want to exist. <laughs> um, but I do believe there should be a power that best represents the Irish whip. Uh, is that the... I don't know what that means. So when... A, okay, so Aiden, an Irish whip is... You know how when the guy takes a guy's arm and throws him off of the ropes? Okay. It's probably the fakest move in wrestling. Okay. 
Uh, it's called the Irish whip. Okay. So I take my arm, your arm, I drag your arm, and you run across to the other ropes. That's yeah, and then and then like back. rebound. Yeah. And you clothesline them. Yeah, the Irish whip was what led to the clothesline. Okay. So yeah, something represent the Irish whip. Okay. Um, I think that would be cool. I don't know. In you know what? Was it you or was it somebody? I think that was something specific. Where talking about somebody who want who uses like an object a lot, like the chair. Oh, like a hardcore wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Like like something that'd be funny. I mean, again, uh, unless clothesline is something that they have. Uh, I think clothesline might have been listed. Okay. Um, if it isn't, shame on you. Something like effects of like on a certain character, like if this person's KO'd, if he's got this power showing, or you know if he's sent out of your, you know, back to you know, out of a certain range of squares, if he moves back and he can carry on a light object or something, you know, like how they grab the chairs from the thing and they. Can <laughs> if this character was knocked back, give them a light object. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of what I remember. You know, like audience participation, <laughs> something like that. What do you got, Amber? I want a, a TLC power. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Yep. I want uh, the character to be the table TLC tables, ladders, chairs. Character would get group movement, ignore elevated. When they use an object in in a close attack, they get like plus one attack. And when they knock back a character, they break blocking. I like this. Amber, when did you become a game designer? <laughs> <laughs> they let me design wrestling. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, here we go. Which of the WWE powers that we do know already should be on a hero click? So like a regular hero clicks character. And I think, I think. 50 to 75% of the characters that they give sidestep to should actually have nimble. Yes. Yeah, that's that new... Or that ropes thing that's that's improved. Like a new leap climb type thing. Well, nimble nimble was a sidestep for one square with plus two to break away. Okay. Yeah. I would love that. So I sidestep break away all of the time. Like, that is a constant... I don't know how many times I've rolled for sidestep break away this weekend. <laughs> But that is definitely a constant thing that I roll for. <coughs> okay, now this next one might already be addressed. Okay. What limits should these powers have to avoid being o overpowered? So, like, what limits should WWE powers have? And we already know the first one, and they've already addressed it, was like, oh my god, can pick a power guys to use these powers? And the limitation is, yeah, but you got to invest in a WWE character. Yes. There has to be one on the board. Now, I do believe, I could be wrong on this, but I do believe when they made that uh, clarification was that if your opponent is playing a WWE character, you have access to that pack as well. Interesting. Okay. Alright. Um, do we think there should be other WWE inherent abilities? I mean, we don't know everything yet. Yeah, it's hard to say when we don't have the pack in front of us. We don't know what's going to be released. And from the looks of it, it looks like they're going to do an entire pack. Yeah. So well, I would think that they would have to because are they not doing circle powers or anything? <coughs> yes, basically. More or less. So I mean, you're so, going to have to. Yeah. I don't think. So yeah. I mean, we talked about this in the last episode and the fact that there are like something like 25, 30 powers and we know what, like two? Three? Yeah. Five. <laughs> Sorry, we know three is rules and five's existence. <laughs> All right. What would you do to make tag teams work? I There's two, I think, two functional ways that you can make tag teams work. Three, technically, in my opinion. I think one, shifting focus. Yeah. Two, duo, duo, t, uh, duo abilities. Three, we already have it. If next to X character, increase stat. Yeah. So, like, the Dudley boys would get, like, plus one. Or Bubble Ray Dudley, Dudley would give Devon plus one defense and Bubble Ray plus one defense. And Devon would give them both plus one attack. Yeah. What about a call, a call in ID card type thing? That also a thing, but, I mean, 
I mean, would be yeah, but I, okay, carry on. What were sorry. You I mean, that's kind of I'm thinking not with tag teams. It's usually specific people, but I remember like back in the old days <laughs> where it was like okay, you'd have like tag team matches, and it would like and they weren't an official tag team, so you had oh my God, who was it? Like it was like Andre the Giant and the Million Dollar Man. Sure. <laughs> or like when someone does a run in. Million Dollar a Man IRS. Sure. Okay. They weren't like. Well, they were. They were money they incorporated. Were. Okay. But no, I'm. <laughs> no, it was like Earthquake and Andre the Giant or somebody like that. There were these two sure. like bad guys, and they were like up against Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. Yep. Something like that. You have like the ability to like. Hey, look at so and so can call in X number of people. I mean, work like a caller ID type thing, but you replace them. I don't know. I'm, I might be too out with that. I agree with everything Jason said, but actually, Aiden kind of brought in a cool idea with like the ID cards and the call ins. Like, how many times do we get like run ins? Where, like, where it seems like someone's gonna win a match and then someone runs in from backstage and they're like, no, I want the championship. I'm gonna stop you from winning this. And they just kind of like show up. I think that would make for a really cool kind of call in. Uh, Dress yours. Yeah. R K O out of nowhere. Yeah, but I don't think, <laughs> isn't that mostly just a Randy Orton thing? Well, I know, but that would be like our first instant, inst like. You know, oh my god, Randy Orton wasn't even in the ring at, and all of a sudden he's there and dropped an yeah. RKO, right? That would be, I think, the first way, the best way to first attempt some kind of thing. Because not every wrestler also is going to do a run-in. Yeah. The heels are generally going to be the ones doing the run-in, whereas the good guys don't do the run-in. But until... then that also be, I mean, like, the, yeah. that could lead into having, like, the ID cards. Because you're not going to get an ID card of every single wrestler. Yeah. You get an ID card of, say, all the heels. And, like, okay, all the heels are going to run in. I think it should be just a trade on the on them, though. Yeah. Like the five plus five points, uh, or five points for your team uh, interference. Or a sideline active. Side, Yeah, five points, sideline active. Give a character a power action. Or if a character take da has taken damage since your last turn. <laughs> For no, yeah, anyway, something along those lines. There we go. We got way off on a tangent on that one. <laughs> well, I mean, he asked a question. He did. Which WWE superstar would you like to see? I already know Amber's answer to this one, so I'm not going to steal it. Uh, because I have my own answer. Ricochet. He's basically human Spider-Man. But human-ish. I haven't figured him out yet. But Ricochet. Okay. I want Brett to hit me. Brett the Hitman Hart. A little Canadian content. Amber? I want my girl. Who's your girl? I want, I want my girl in Hero Fix. I want Ember Moon in Hero Fix. She was at the WizKids booth. There is Shame on you, Jay. evidence of her at the WizKids booth at PAX last year. Shame on you, Jay. <laughs> she knows the company. Give her a click. All right. Which WWE star do you think WizKids will never make? Ultimate Warrior? <laughs> Hulk Hogan, maybe? Chris Benoit? <laughs> oh! It... I don't know. <laughs> because, let's face facts, sometimes WizKids make shit and it's like, why the fuck did you make oh, this? In, in the case of Chris Benoit, the WWE wouldn't allow it. Well, okay, I don't, I don't know enough about... <laughs> okay, for the uninitiated, Chris Benoit was a fantastic Canadian pro wrestler who went off the deep end at one point and, uh, when I say off the deep end, way off the deep end, and killed his family and then himself. Okay, yeah, I thought that's what had happened. <laughs> but I'm like, what was that like? Like, I didn't realize that that would be something that someone would be negatively. Like, I thought the kids still had fans. Oh, no, 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 no. Like people with Bill Cosby. I think it's more of like a legal issue. Of, yeah, like, okay, I'll accept that. Um, <laughs> you can't have his likeness anymore. I don't know that. I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, yeah. I that, don't know that, the legal ramifications of a lot of people, so I don't know, like, 
Okay. So okay. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> now, who is your favorite wrestler? Not necessarily WWE. Mine is a proper villain, Marty Skrull. I love Marty. I love Marty. For one, he's part of a faction that brought PCO Jean Pierre Lafitte back into wrestling. Ask, ask, again, I ask anybody to go back in time, find 13 to 16 year old Jason, and tell him in 20 years, one of the best matches you'll ever watch live is going to be Jean Pierre Lafitte in his 60s. I will call you a liar, sir. Who's your favorite wrestler? Bret Hart is my favorite wrestler. Amber? Um, well, I did mention WWE. Best favorite wrestler is Ember Moon. Uh huh. We're not talking WWE. Did somebody say Adventure? Adventure? Stone Rockwell. <laughs> He's like an Indiana Jones pro wrestler. Okay. He's hilarious. He's great. Get back to Destiny Wrestling, Stone Rockwell. Or at least keep the Stone Rockwell character alive. Please, WWE, don't kill Stone Rockwell. Kill him. Like him. All right. So the next one is gonna probably gonna be the reason we now understand why Mr. Malcolm Rush had questions about unions. Okay. He hasn't played since Icons. That's a oh, he poor, poor child. So back when he was playing Hero Clicks, Hypersonic still had full range. They're um, soaring. Yeah, right. I think Soaring was that still, far back? No, Soaring was Soaring was gone by Icons. I think. Okay. Are they still have no, I don't think it was because that was a big uh, strategy with Icons Superman was to hypersonic full range shoot, run back and soar. All right. <clears throat> but he wants to know what changes you should be aware of when he plays. Okay. How much battery time do you have on that thing? <laughs> well, it's plugged into a portable battery, but I don't know how much time that has. Um, there's a couple things. One, everything you know about the game of Hero Clicks is very different, except attacking is attacking, moving is moving, damage is damage. All those stats are still on the dial, range is range, all that stuff. But fundamentally, a lot of minutia has changed about the game, so your understanding of the game is going to be different. Uh, I think that's going to be... That's basically it, because it's just... Like, in the last three, four years, they've changed fundamentally certain powers so drastically. They they flip-flop, like, energy exploded, from what I remember from when it was originally done. Was, it's totally different when they changed it, and they thought, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore, and they've changed it yet again. And it's it's all around the mulberry bush, sort of. Um, but, yeah, basically throw out whatever rule book from that and go buy something recent. Or go on the Win WizKids website and get a new one. Yes. Um, so for that I have a little anecdote. Um, for us in Canada, I know we mentioned it I think in the last episode, was that we take French uh, mandatory in school. And uh, oui. so uh -huh. from like a young age, um, we start in grade four, from a young age up until high school we learn French. So one of the optional languages that you can learn is German. So when my brother took German, the very first class, the teacher entered class and she was like, all right, everybody here has been taking French for the last five years. Forget everything you know, we're gonna teach you German because there's nothing translatable between French and German. So that's basically that. Forget everything you know about Heroclix and come learn hero clicks. Everything you know is wrong, everything has changed. Go back to the start. Yeah. Uh, what common mistakes do returning players make? Assuming nothing has changed. Yeah. <laughs> Not reading the rule book. Try thinking they know, and I am speaking of this to myself, thinking they know the rules. Yep. If you even have the slightest hesitation that is this right, read the pack, pull out the pack, pull out the rule book. Like, I still do it because it changed so much. Like, in 2017, the rules changed so much that I'm like, am I thinking of the new rules? The new, new rules? Or, like, three years ago rules? <laughs> um, yeah. Basically, it's, it's like they don't remember what does what. They haven't caught up. And they haven't realized that something has changed. Or they don't read the card. 
Yeah. And it's like, okay. Um, characters come with cards now. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. <laughs> By the way, they come with cards. Some of them are like a little book. Um, some of them read have like, like read like a textbook. And the other thing is, is that you're gonna see white boxes on the dial, or little stars on the dial, which means something completely added powers are, are there. Um, but yeah, it's just like, read, you've got to read what happens. Don't assume as, you know, there's a lot of people like, I was playing a couple a game with somebody and said, okay, well I have this power, and if this power happens, I get to do this. So do you have that power? Like, well, yes, I have this power, and if it triggers, so it's, it's comprehending and reading what's going on in the corner. Uh, he wants to know any type fun team suggestions. I mean, when it comes to playing the game of Hero Clicks, you look for fun, and you don't, you're like, if you're looking for a fun team suggestion, but the most fun you can have is grab your barrel of Hero Clicks, shake it up a little, grab a handful, start adding up some points. Or find a team or car comic that you like and build dudes from that. It, yeah, that's that's it. It's, <sighs> this is this is a now from my perspective, it is a hey, this will be fun because I like this character, like this comic, like this team idea. Oh my god, it'd be stupid to play Great Lake Avengers, um, and that's fun because that's wacky and wild. And why would you put these people on a team together? Uh, and that's that can be fun. But again, it's for a person to tell another person how to have fun and what is fun is very, very difficult from any perspective. I mean, yeah, I hate you can have fun question. drinking and playing hero clicks, or you know, doing something ridiculous when something else happens. Not just playing the game as it all set up, but adding little side events like uh, I don't know, take a shot every time you have a critical hit, something to that effect. I would never take a shot. <laughs> Every time we got a critical hit. Jason remained sober throughout the game because the game was take a shot every time you hit a six with a super sense. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you. Uh, they pretty much uh, nailed it there where it's like you can have fun pretty much playing just about anything. Like we can't tell you what's going to be fun for you. Like we can suggest that some themes are fun and some things are wacky. Like, hey, why don't you play a bunch of whales? <laughs> whale, 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 what do we have here? Um, but other than that, it's, it's really subjective as to how you have fun. And there's also people that have a lot of fun only playing strictly competitive and only playing the high end meta. And that's super fun for them. And that's totally cool that that's super fun for them. Uh, there's other people that want to play the craziest, weirdest team out there, and that's super fun for them. So it really comes down to what is fun for you. And what's going to be fun for me isn't always fun for Jason or Aiden, and what's fun for Aiden isn't always fun for Jason or me. Um, so, yeah, there's not much we can, much more we can say on that. All right, just give me a second. Ah, all right. So we now move from Heroclix questions to personal questions. Oh my. I enjoy long walks on the beach. <laughs> Aiden doesn't enjoy long walks No, I don't. I don't like Aiden long walks. Aiden hates the beach. I hate the beach. No, I don't mind the beach. I just he don't hates like the beach. I will be carried on the beach. He hates carried sand. Carried on the beach. <laughs> that dude. <laughs> Alright, but. Scorpio. Next up is, do you have any other hobbies other than hero clicks? Hold on a second. I'm just going to make sure the battery is charged for Aiden. <laughs> um, I personally play Magic the Gathering, uh, but specifically the Commander and Popper formats. So Commander is a very social, casual four-player format. Popper is commons only as long as it's ever been printed in common is legal in the format. With a certain, you know, of course it's banned. Banned list Magic's pretty careful about that. Uh, I also play Pokemon cards, the card game, with my kids. And I both, I am really, kind of, sort of, into video games. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. I wouldn't really consider that a hobby. You don't do that frequently. It's true. It is what I do for a living. <laughs> you love your work. All right. What about you, Aiden? I, I'm a comic book collector. I like collecting comic books. And that's how I got into Hero Clicks. That somebody said, the, the store owner said, hey, we've got this new product here. It's 
comic book people in little figurine forms. Why didn't you buy it? And that's how you both met Max and started playing Heroclix. <laughs> Actually, yeah, because of this. Because <laughs> well, because I and I didn't I didn't start going to that store until somebody said, "Hey, look, you've got to go to this store because it's they've consistently run a game on Saturday." <laughs> like, okay, that's fantastic. And I don't have to go to downtown Toronto. I thought there's anything wrong. With that. Don't you just play the Transformers card game? I do. Uh, yeah, uh, Wizard of the Coast came out with a Transformers game, a uh, card game, uh, based on, it's now in its third series, uh, it's, it's Transformers, and you have cards that do things, and you have, like, your Optimus Prime and what have you. Uh, it's fun. It's apparently, it's only, like, I'm not even a year old, I don't think. I don't think so, no. Um. And it's it, it's it's quite the like they've already got like banned cards. Yeah, I was like, Wizards of the Coast is careful about that stuff. Incidentally, Transformers made by Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast owned by Hasbro. That was a pretty short walk to get the license for that. <laughs> yeah, it very much so was. This also explains why we don't have Transformers cards. They have their own resources for collectible games. Why would games. they make their own? Why wouldn't they make their own? Amber? I read and collect a lot of comics. I know I talk about it a lot, and I can go on a lot of tangents about comics. We are, we are the co-mayors of tangent. <laughs> um, I love board games. I play a lot of board games when I can. I own a lot of board games. I play a lot of video do. games. <laughs> Not as much as I used to. Um, but I... Uh, I think I would say video games and comics are my longest running um, hobby because I started both. Uh, I started playing video games when I was three, three or four uh, years old. Um, and uh, I started reading comics when I was about five. Uh, when I was old enough to read, I was reading comics with my dad. So uh, that was a big thing. Um, completely separate of what these guys do and you got to see it a little bit on the last episode I love crocheting and I make a lot of really cool stuff with my crochet like I made my Captain America bag which is amazing and it comes to like every hero plus tournament with me so if you guys see me carrying that bag around I made it myself uh, without a pattern or anything, I was just like, hey, I want to make this design. I'm going to figure out how to do it, and then I did it. Uh, that was fucking shameless of you plugging your own product like that, Amber. I am ashamed of you. Plus, it's not I can't like I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> she should. She's really good. She's made a lot of other stuff for other people. It's really good stuff. Yeah. It's all wizardry to me. She moves this magic wand with string, and all of a sudden, a backpack shows up in my house. <laughs> It's wizardry, I don't care. And I almost forgot about our massive board game hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you like a room dedicated to it, don't you? It's, like well, the it, back wall no, no, that, in, that's my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What animals do you like or want as a pet? I, for a long time, had pet turtles. And I do love turtles. Uh, and I would if I... Yes, I like turtles. Turtles. I like that's turtles. not what I mean. I'm, that's not why I'm... Um, very but yes, if I, you know... I like him. I would keep him as a pet again. Aiden. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> what are my favorite animals? My favorite animals. Well, not, even, what, not necessarily your favorite. What do you like? Oh, I like. It could be. It could be your favorite. I don't care. Um, I'm just gonna go with that because that <laughs> sounds like like what do I like versus what do I, uh, I was. Um, my favorite animals are the owl and uh, the dolphin, and I. <laughs> Why is that funny? It's what it was. When, look, at, I grew up in a town and grew up in a city where, like, everybody by grade 11 wanted nothing to do, be nothing but marine biologists. And that's what I, I, I did. I wanted to be a marine biologist. Or I wanted to go into paleontology, um, but I don't like the sun. And, um, oh, it's too fucking hot out there. I'm not digging. Uh, so, and dinosaurs. So I'm, I'm very big into dinosaurs. You know, I, I chuckle at dolphins, not because of, you know, the, the 
whatever. It, it, it's more about what dolphins do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dolph dolphins are like the only other animal that has sex for fun. But they also do it violently for fun. Yes. They engage in gang rapes and... Amber! Well, I was looking for something on the more of the, the they rescue like people at sea and they're like the clowns of the ocean. But if you want to go all fucking nasty about it, okay. Oh, oh, sure. They're, they're they're clowns when they're not doing anything to you, Aiden. What about those other dolphins? They also <laughs> beat the crap out of sharks. Just, just bully Dude. sharks. The shark isn't even being threatened to them. They're like, hey guys, hey guys, look at that shark. Let's go beat them up, and they just ram them. Well. They do something about it, unlike the turtles that just stick their heads in their shell and just sit there. You know what? Turtles are peak efficiency as an animal. Because you know what? No matter where they go, they're home. So are crabs. Exactly. And, and crab, I mean, uh, crabs come with home defense. <laughs> so what did you discuss on the on the move and attack thing? We discussed why animals are violent towards other people. <laughs> Violently this group. Amber? Amber? What impression of animals do you like before this degrades into nonsense childishness? My favorite animal is wolves. Wolves? Wolves. I always thought they were bears. Look what you married. That's different. No, that would be cats. I really like dogs. I couldn't have a dog growing up because my dad's really badly allergic. You like eggs? I am severely allergic. I always had small rodent and animals, pretty much anything you could find in a general pet store. I raised uh, and bred nagus, which are squirrels that are domesticated. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, I don't think I would ever have a pet again. <laughs> I have three children, I don't need pets. They haven't come to you saying, can we get oh, a dog? Oh, they have, and my response is, which one of your brother and sister are we getting rid of? Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, what games, besides from Clicks, do you enjoy? Well, I've already said I enjoy Magic the Gathering. That's the Transformers cards game. Which type of game? No, which games aside from Clicks? Games aside. Mind games are fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I, I, I'm like, momentarily I thought to myself, Amber's going to say that, I want to kind of be the first one to say it. Sorry. Uh, board games, video games, like... Games are just fun. Like, games. games! 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 I like games! Alright, I can't wait to be the only one to have an answer for this one. What sports do you like to play? <laughs> Aiden? Amber? Um, Mini putt? <laughs> Golfing's a sport! Oops. He's not wrong. So and then, I do love mini putt. So bowling then, Amber? Yes, I love bowling. Bowling's fun. Bowling's on ESPN sometimes. Bowling's a sport. Sorry, TSN for the Canadian content. Was, is billiards considered a sport? No, I don't consider it a sport. Just, it's considered it's a sport. It's another game. It, I think it's actually no because it's it's on ESPN and TSN as well. So well, I, I know, but I mean, so is curling. Yeah, but have you ever tried to carry a curling rock? No. Have you ever tried to go down the ice? Bro, have you watched? Ice? No. I, I've watched curling and I have, have performed you? curling. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. I wasn't like on I apologize team. to you then. Yeah. I went to, we we did a couple of curling classes as part of school for one of, one of my oh. gym courses. I think I'm the only athletic one in this house, in this car, which you wouldn't know by looking at me. Teenage <laughs> Jason was a whole Teenage person. Jason was a superhero, let me tell you. <laughs> Teenage Jason, is that the same pictures where you're like super duper skinny? Yeah. No, no, no. Scary. Super skinny was 27 year old Jason when he just had his kid. Oh. Uh, Unless I, we've shown you the pictures of him in like grade nine. Have you seen no the pictures of me in my wrestling singlets? No. No. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a gradual like. Uh, uh, what happened to this kid? I did judo when I was in when I was in high school. Well, that's a sport. I, I know, but I'm. I think the implication there's what do you do now? I mean, I still enjoy wrestling whenever I get a chance. I just happen to do it drunken now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you tried to wrestle Jason on the way out. Of I was going to well, say that. I was like, that's pretty much what I was like, here. I kind of wanted this to actually be a match. I was level. considering it. <laughs> we didn't have a six hour drive ahead of us. Exactly. And, you know, if he fell, because I was going to try a belly to belly suplex, but he's big. And if that if that ended wrong, then that whole trip this just becomes a nightmare. So now we know what we're going to do in 
Memphis. Exactly. We're, we're gonna, <laughs> there's going to be one room reserved for Jason and Jason to just wrestle in. There's going to be gonna a be camera. It's going to be a brand new day off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jared Lord. Uh, but I do enjoy wrestling myself. As in, like, I used to wrestle in high school. I do know some limited level of submission wrestling. Like, I know enough of both to kind of compete if I was to do so. And I, when I, if I had the opportunity and knew where the teams practice, I would get back into Australian rules football. It was another game I used to play. It's kind of a, a mixture of like soccer, basketball, and rugby. It's an exciting sport. You should watch it. And tackles are amazing to watch in it because if you watch it in normal speed, it looks like one person replaced another. Because <laughs> they usually come from the side like a body check. It's like, bam, and all of a sudden, that guy's gone flying, and this is this other guy where he was. Oh, my. It's, it's so cool to watch sometimes. All right. What TV shows, movies, books do you like? TV shows. Um, I've been really enjoying Stranger Things lately. I think I'm going to put that as, like, my top T. Oh, no. I did like Luke Cage. Luke Cage was a favorite TV show of mine. Um, so I really enjoy watching Netflix TV shows, to be honest. Just because they you get them all at once and you can watch them at your own pace. And that's perfect for my lifestyle right now. Um, movies. I do enjoy a lot of sci-fi. But my favorite movie right now is Pacific Rim. Um, and, uh, geez, I wish I could read more books. Uh, and I, I've heard a lot of things. I'm not going to answer books until I can start finding some time to read again. Because, I honestly, I read comic books. I read a lot of comic books and I love like I'm on I'm I'm in heaven right now because there's been a resurgence of my favorite barbarian books being Conan and Red Sonia so uh, that's kind of my reading material what about you Aiden okay so my favorite movie is Jurassic Park and while not completely accurate and yes a lot of people be like oh my god that's not like understand that when that came out, I was, I was like eleven or twelve, and that was like I don't know, one or two years older than me. When the first one came that out, that was ninety-four. I was ten when the first one, or twelve when the first game came out. I wasn't in high school yet. I was in grade. I grade. wasn't in high school. I was on my way to middle school. So you'd have been thirteen. 14. Okay, maybe 13. Grade 8, yeah, 13, 14, 13, and going on 14, depending on when you're, you're November. So you'd oh my have been God. 13. No, because if it was 79 and it came out in 1994. Yeah, you'd have been going on 15. No, it's got to be 93. Anyway, the point is <laughs> uh, that movie it was my favorite, and it's not because it was a horror It was just nobody's ever done that for dinosaurs. No one's judging that. you. I like Pacific Rim as my favorite. That's movie. okay. It's, I wasn't judging you then either. Everybody's got their choice. Uh, my favorite. Um, I have a favorite series of books. My favorite series of books are the Percy Jackson series, uh, which I highly recommend to anybody to read because it is, it's a Harry Potter meets uh, Greek mythology, Roman mythology. It's so well done. It's, there's a lot of character Do development. not judge it by the movie. The movie was horrible. Oh God, don't judge it by the movies at all. Oh sweet Jesus. Never judge a book by its movie. No. Never, <laughs> never. Made that on a t-shirt. Um, and so it's it's that. Uh, I also enjoyed the original Jurassic Park book. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, television shows. Star Trek: The Next Generation is probably my favorite television show series uh, that has come out. Um, I have watched. That was really enjoyable. Uh, I've also recently, I really enjoyed the Umbrella Academy. That was good. Oh god, it was so good. Uh, and I'm very. It's a Netflix show. It is Netflix. Surprisingly better than the comic. I can't read the comic. See, that's the thing. It's like there's so much, so many people are like, oh, did you read this? I have the first two volumes. If you want to take a look at it. You know, Max said the same thing to me because did you? I've got copies of the original. I'm like, I don't want to read the source material because I'm gonna feel that it's gonna ruin something. You know what I mean? It's like you watch the no, movie. You'll be happy that you watched the show. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go with that. I mean, to various degrees, there's been shows that I've watched that I've a lot mm -hmm. and I've enjoyed, but like favorites are there. So not bad. All right. And um, I don't have a favorite movie. It's not because I don't like movies. It's just because I like a lot of stuff that I couldn't be like, yeah, that's my favorite movie. Um, I know the movie that I have probably watched the most times. Frozen. 
<laughs> Just kidding. That's happen. the case. I've watched the half, first half an hour of Tangle so many times. Anyway. Um, would probably be Resident Evil. The first one. Just watched I it a lot. watch it like every night before bed. I've never seen somebody wear out a DVD before. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. Um, I was going to say, that's, I didn't know that was possible. Now, now, when I was watching, it was the VHS. Oh. Uh, that was why I made that joke. Um, uh, for TV shows, I like anything really sci-fi, fantasy, um, anything that kind of has a weird, even like modern day settings, but like with a weird quirk to it. Like I really loved Lucifer. on the stupid. Yeah. Um, like, watching The 100 and Riverdale for no good reason other than I, <laughs> I enjoy the cheesiness of them. Um, for books, oh gosh, it's all over the place. Um, I have two favorite writers, um, Rick Riordan, who does the Percy Jackson universe, and Kevin J. Anderson, who I got into as a teenager because of Jedi Knight series, and uh, I have expanded into a bunch of his other What's other that? books. And actually, my favorite book by him is called Captain Nemo. And I would honestly suggest it to anybody. It's a fantastic book. It's a totally fringe book. I don't know anybody else that's actually read it. Um, like even when I went and met him at Fan Expo, I was talking with other people that were there to meet him who have read his books. And I was like, Oh my gosh, have you guys read Captain? Like, what is that? Um, it is written, uh, the main character is Jules Verne as a kid and, and a young adult, and he grows up, and his best friend is Captain Nemo. And you find out that all of the stories that Jules Verne wrote were actually true stories based on his childhood friend. So it's kind of like this, like, fantastical look at, like, the real life of Jules Verne, as if every story that he told was true. So it's it's a it's a great book. Anyways, I read it when I was like 16 or something. Um, I read all of the Game of Thrones books that have been out so far. Um, really enjoyed reading those. Um, <laughs> there is people will say how like George R. R. Um, J. R. R. Tolkien was really good at describing like blades of grass and this scenery. Nobody said he was good at it. We all gave him shit <laughs> for doing will. it. And then like spends a paragraph on a battle. George R. R. Martin does the same thing with food. You can sit and Have you seen George R. R. Martin? <laughs> you can sit and read a chapter where he talks about any of the weddings or like the feasts that they go to and it's literal pages of just the food that they're eating. And it's like now I'm hungry. <laughs> My God, I gained 10 pounds reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm not reading that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the food. <laughs> All right, this next one is actually, I think it's not going to go particularly long. What countries have you visited and where do you want to go? I have visited the U.S. as a Canadian. That is it. Um, I would one day like to visit Australia, though now as an adult, I realize everything will kill me there. Uh, so possibly Ireland would be an interesting place as well. I generally want to avoid the heat, so I don't want to go to many places that are hot. Aiden. Uh, I have been to the US uh, in various, most of the Eastern seaboard. Uh, and I have been to the Dominican Republic. Uh, I, like Jason, avoid the heat when possible. Uh, I I would like to go to Europe. Basically, there's a lot of places in Europe. I love to go to Scotland, England, uh, Greece is uh, really high on my list um, in terms of where I would want to go. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, probably like most Canadians, I have never actually explored or been to parts of our own country. I have actually never been west, uh, further west than like Windsor. 
Nope, no, me neither. I haven't seen Manitoba, Saskatchewan. I've, I've there's a whole nother province, whole nother country that way, and I've actually been more into more different parts of the U.S. than I've been different parts of Canada. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Speaking of, like Canadian wise, I'm the same way. I've never gone west. I've only gone east. Um. I have been as far as Prince Edward Island, which is basically our east coast. About the size of a potato, and that's what they grow to. Um. <laughs> A bunch of like pretty much all of my dad's side of the family is actually from the East Coast, which is where a whole different discussion about why I talk the way that I talk. Um, countries I have visited, I've been to the States and I've been to the Caribbean. I don't know where the islands fall into, but I've been to St. Thomas and I've been to St. Martin. I don't know if they're their own place they or are. where they are what they belong to. Well, they're the Caribbean islands, aren't they? Are they yeah, but that's a generic, that's like a, an area. Okay. That's not like a commonwealth or anything like that. I think they're their own country. Yeah, okay. so I've been there. <laughs> Alright. I would love to go to Ireland and Britain and uh, Greece and Rome. Home of the funny talkers. Yeah. Alright, now we're out of Malcolm Rush. It's only been a little over an hour. On the second time, yeah. All right, so next up, this one comes from Le Chad. How's your French? Je me parle un peu de français, mais je comprends un peu de français, mais je ne parle beaucoup de français. Yeah, I understand it better than I speak it, mostly because I sound like a moti anglais when I do speak my French. My sister can roll her R's, I cannot roll my R's to save myself. Your R's cannot roll? And every time, no, you know what literally can describe you? Go online, look up the scene where uh, groundskeeper Willie is teaching French in the Simpsons episode, <laughs> and you've basically got me without the kilt. <laughs> Amber? Guys, I can barely speak English. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. She's now learning mime. <laughs> okay, next up. If that was you, a question? That was a question. Much. Next up, if you were a hero, would, and this is the next couple are all anonymous. If you're a hero, would you want your identity public? Can you imagine the idea? Oh, geez. You see, as a man with a family, no. I'm, I, I would say no. Um, I don't think so. And like a lot of that comes from like doing this channel as well. Like you guys get to see our personality here. And when you meet us in, at conventions, you see us there. But there is very few people that we meet at conventions that we become close with that actually get to know us. And it's like, oh yeah, we know those guys from Mary with Clicks. And it's like, yeah, you really don't know us. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Aiden is making fun of me and almost killing us. <laughs> hey, it's only the second time this time. Trent. So I, I feel like it'd that be a guy very was similar cute. thing where it's like, oh shit, I'm a superhero now. Like, it's like, yeah, you don't, you don't need to know what goes on in my personal life. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's, it's that. I think it's the retaliation. You know, reading comic books and, and you've seen what people, like, when they out, oh God, who, what did they do? What was one where they outed the person as Spider-Man? Huh? No, they never, I don't, Spider-Man Spider outed himself. himself. Yeah. Uh, Dazzler. Dazzler, oh, yeah. they out, uh, when she became a mutant, she was, when it was revealed that she was a mutant, I don't think she did it herself. Okay. There was, like, this whole backlash, and, like, people, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to be like, hey, I'm going to take your family because you've got superpowers, you're going to do bullshit stuff to you. You know, like, you can read minds, okay, I want you to affect whatever. I suppose it would depend on your superpower, too. Yeah, it does. All right, next up. Who is the best? Sorry, a little stumble there because we have to switch batteries. We killed this one battery. And I half fresh. don't know how much half fresh is sent us a battery. All right. There we go. Okay, we, this is full. We should make it through the last couple questions on this. Uh, if <laughs> Who's the best, X-Man or X-Woman? Uh, Amber, what's your answer? What's the definition of best, though? Let's go with favorite. Favorite? Okay, well, 
if you don't know by now. <laughs> Go back uh, and watch all the other episodes. My favorite, well, my favorite X-Man is Beak. No. <laughs> mine's her, mine's Glob Herman. Dude, Glob is awesome. Beak is awesome. He, he beat, he beat Hyperion. Beak is pretty awesome. Um, but no, my favorite X-Men is, uh, is Wolverine. My favorite X-Woman is Psylocke. Okay. Uh, there is an answer to this, and I have to split it. Uh, well, it's actually split the answer. Okay, my favorite X-Men is Cyclops. Uh, the We're best copying this episode. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> my the best X-Men is Storm. Yes. Storm is the best X-Men. I think, given everything, and and please, if your knowledge of X-Men is limited to. Besides Clara Hiroclix, is limited to the movies. Don't, don't go by any of that. Like, nope. pick up books, pick up stuff. She was the leader of the a mutant team, which she had no powers, if and still want, kick ass. If you want a comic accurate storm in the movies, um, Black Panther's mom. <laughs> and she was the original choice when they were casting her. Yeah, they, they, a lot of people right? wanted her to be. Storm, and I, I can still see it. Yep, it was fantastic. Sorry, uh, we'll hit the next stop. Yeah, Jason. Uh, I'm not a massive X Men fan, uh, but if there's anybody I can relate to on the X Men, it's Beast. I understand the body hair, bro. <laughs> Being the smartest guy in the room and having that much hair, nobody takes it seriously. I got you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and as far as ex-women are concerned, I mean, Jean Grey keeps dying, so I'm not going to go with that. <laughs> I don't know why that is, though. Because Claremont leaves, and then she comes back to life, and then Claremont comes back and is like, I killed her! He's killed know. everybody, though. He killed Psylocke. Fair enough. Yeah, Psylocke's actually died about three times now, too. She recently died. Oh, she's catching up with Jean Grey. They killed Sunspot, eh? Well, they've killed everyone by at this point, though. I'm like, anyway, tangent. It's okay. Hickman's ready to my, just be like, all right, reset. My favorite ex woman is still Storm, based on the comics. Halle Berry was a terrible choice. You can actually edit her out of that movie and not even notice the difference. In fact, you'd be you'd be down one bad line. Alright, has anyone put together the BC Avengers in your area, and how did it do? I I, I have them all. I oh, them. in their current iteration, haven't had a chance to play them. Well, considering we didn't, I wasn't able to get my mammoth today. This which will be on the next show that we which, film. Which uh, I have not yet used them. I have, I don't have them all. I have a couple of them. I have access to the rest of it. Dear God, if Whiskers had any brains, they're going to make the Phoenix part of the X-Men set that comes out this September. If not, I'm sure there's going to be kind of, some kind of revolt. Because uh, I think she's the only one that's left. Anyway, uh, no. So I haven't played them. I want to. Okay. Amber? No. You guys share collections, so it's pretty much yeah, it's See Jason's point. answer. I don't know. Sometimes Amber comes off to a Cherry Clicks tournament when I'm not paying attention, right? Uh, should judges or tournament organizers, this is another question now, implement the Highlander rules in their stores to prevent duplication of pieces? No. Long, or the short answer? No. The long answer, for a casual event and you want to make sure that you have specific rules or you have, you, you want to specify for your casual level tournaments that you follow a one figure rule, sure. But if you want to try to implement it as a whole on your store, get a life. There's rules to the game. They make unique characters unique for a reason. Aiden? No. I don't think that that's something because you're... If that's that's an over-the-store listing. And it can be very difficult if somebody doesn't have access to a large collection or something like that, but they've got all these uncommons or comments or whatever that they happen to have. Uh, if you're the judge and you want to do it for a specific... Uh, 
let's say for example when I do a 800 point game for some reason yep. and I put it up I don't say Highlander I will specify okay no, no character or like no colossals or something yeah. to that effect if you're trying to maneuver you know manipulate the gaming in a more positive way because somebody showed up with you in the tester or Galactus for an event that we did a couple of weeks ago and it was like really? you, you just want to be that guy? so no don't Highlander rules are fun in certain situations but no as an overarching thing no alright last question has Disney declared war on redheads? No. No, it's, I mean, yeah, okay, a couple redheaded characters have been cast in different goes. Them being a redhead hasn't been part of the character. So, no, Disney hasn't declared war on redheads. Do you know who declared a war on redheads? Smallville. <laughs> Everybody's going to look at me weird, but there were so many characters in Smallville that are redheads in the comics didn't show up as redheads in the show. Um, there is a one single redhead that showed up that was supposed to be a redhead, and that was Maxima. Jimmy Olsen kind of was a redhead. Aaron oh, Ashmore God. is not a redhead. Okay. Uh, why the hell? What? No. I mean... It's all... This is the aerial thing. It's, it's a meme thing. Oh, is it that? Is that what We got memed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching two fantastic Quebec-filled episodes of Moving Attack. We will see you guys uh, next. Uh, this trio rather, um, as a, you know, as we talk about Canadian nationals. Yes.